The constellation Gemini flies high over the southern horizon in late winter and early spring near the famous winter constellation Orion. Gemini's two very bright stars and simple outline make it easy to recognize once you know what to look for. In this short video, we'll quickly learn how to spot this constellation and check out a few objects that you can see yourself in a small telescope. This is Touring the Night Sky with Zachary Singer. Gemini's shape echoes the myth of the Greek twins Castor and Pollux, each twin represented by a long line of stars running roughly parallel to each other, as we see here. Note the bright stars at the head of each twin. By no coincidence, they're named Castor and Pollux. In this interpretation of the constellation's outline, the twins' stick figure bodies end with a bit of a twist at the bottom. I always find thinking of these as the twins' feet helps me remember Gemini's overall shape. Easy peasy. As a double check that we're looking in the right place, a jump from Castor to the other twin's foot, and continuing for about the same distance and direction, would bring us to Orion's belt, a truly unmistakable landmark. If you're not familiar with Orion, by the way, you're missing out on a lot, so check out our video on that constellation too. If you are familiar with Orion, then you can use that constellation to find Gemini. Jumping from the belt to Betelgeuse points right at Gemini's feet, and Castor and Pollux will be immediately obvious a short distance beyond them. You'll see Gemini very high overhead, towards the south, around 9 p.m. in mid-February, and just a little bit westward in mid-March. The constellation remains visible well into May, though it will have shifted noticeably westward. By the time it does, though, you'll be so familiar with Castor and Pollux that their new position won't phase you. As we see here, you can also find Gemini at other times of the year if you don't mind observing at later hours or in the early morning. So, now that we can find Gemini, what is there to see here? Well, first, a really great open cluster known as Messier 35, or just M35. If you have a telescope, even a small 4-inch one, M35 makes a lovely target under a dark sky. At low power, you may also see a second cluster nearby. This one's called NGC 2158. A first-time observer could easily mistake 2158 for a smaller section of M35, but it's actually as big a cluster as M35. It just looks smaller and dimmer because it's at least five times farther away. We don't often get the chance to sense perspective or compare near and far in space, but this is one of those times, and it's worth a look. Next on our list, Castor, the bright star we've already run across while learning about Gemini. Castor is definitely worth getting familiar with, and not just because it helps us recognize Gemini. For one thing, it's a commonly used star for aligning computerized, or go-to, telescopes. More importantly, though, Castor is a wonderful multiple star system, and quite a sight through even a small telescope. To our eyes, Castor looks like one bright star. But in a telescope, a view at 60 power or more visibly splits it into a pair of stars, and they're actually in orbit around each other. They're bright even in a 4-inch telescope and blazing in a larger one, so if this is all there was to Castor, there would already be worth a look. It's one of my favorites. But, like a late-night TV ad, there's more. Another, smaller star orbits the inner pair. This so-called C companion is dim, but still, you'll see it in a small telescope if you look carefully, and it's pretty easy in a moderate one, like a 6-inch. And here's one more crazy idea for you. Each of the three stars has a very close companion star, though those companions orbit too closely for us to see them directly. In short, though, wrap your mind around the idea that there are actually six stars here, doing an intricate square dance across the eons, as they will continue to, far into the future. Clear skies, my friends. <laughs>